quadratic functions in vertex form. We're going to look at quadratic functions a little more carefully today, and we're going to look at a few pictures here on the screen. And if you look at them, you can see the quadratic that appear all around us. So the first one was in the arc of the waterfall and the arches of McDonald's in the valley of these mountains and the support structure of the bridge and the trajectory of the basketball and on the roller coaster ride. How can I tell something quadratic? If I look at this, it gives me a nice U-shaped curve. Obviously, I'm not very good at tracing. It opens up or it opens down if it's quadratic. A straight line, if I put my ruler over top of it, it's going to be very, very straight. It's going to touch every point on the line. Straight or linear functions can rise to the right like this one does. They can rise to the left like the one I've just added to the screen. They could be horizontal lines, which of course my line is not very horizontal because I can't draw straight. Um, if it's a vertical line, that one, a vertical line could not be considered a function because obviously vertical lines don't pass the vertical line test. If you look at the equation, we're going to look at the linear function first. If you look, it's got a linear term. A constant, which is the negative 3, multiplied by x. It might have a constant term as well. Or if it's a horizontal line, like y equals 5, it only has the constant term instead of the linear term. A quadratic function, on the other hand, has to have a quadratic term. If it doesn't have an x squared term, it can't be considered quadratic. It might have that linear term. It might have the constant term, which in this case is negative 4. It doesn't have to have all three. It can have one of the three. It can have two of the three with a quadratic or a linear term. It can be quadratic and a constant term. But it can't be just the linear term and the quadratic term because that would then be a linear relation. Quadratic functions are parabolic, U-shaped curves. But there are special cases of the parabola that open up or down and can be represented by the equation f at x is ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember, a can't be 0 because this term is 0, I'm left with a linear function. Okay. The vertex of a quadratic function is a very important location and it tells us a lot of information. Okay, it gives us the minimum value on a quadratic that opens upward, like that. It gives us the maximum value on a quadratic that opens down. So if you look at the quadratic right here, the point 3, negative 4 indicates the vertex. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides the parabola into two congruent halves and intersects the parabola at the vertex. Now you'll see I've drawn a vertical line on the graph indicate the axis of symmetry occurs when x is 3. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. And the axis of symmetry always needs the x equals in front of it. It's not a number, it's the equation of a vertical line, so it requires a variable. And when we're graphing a quadratic function, it is not included as part of our graph. Minimum values are the y-coordinates of a point of the uh, vertex, sorry, the y-coordinate of the vertex, so where the curve changes from decreasing to increasing. So if we look, the y-values of the function are decreasing until we get to the minimum. When we get to the minimum, it's not doing either, and then they start increasing again after that. The y-values are getting bigger. So our minimum of this graph is y equals negative 4. The maximum value, on the other hand, is, the y, is still the y-coordinate of the vertex, but it's where the function changes from increasing to decreasing. Obviously, I'm not very good at tracing. 
sorry guys. And you can see the maximum looks like it's around 6.2, but because it's a graph, we don't get a very good idea of what the exact value is. X-intercept. Those are the x-coordinates of the point where the curve, this red quadratic, crosses the x-axis. And you'll see we have two of them for this quadratic, at x equals 1 and at x equals 5. The y-intercepts, similarly, are instead of crossing the x-axis as x-intercepts did, it's where we're crossing the y-axis. So we'll see on this graph we cross the y-axis once at y equals 4. Intervals of increase. We've already kind of used the word increasing. We'll see the function is getting bigger right up here until we get to the vertex, which looks to be around at x equals negative 1.5. So we would write this in a manner similar to domain and range. So the interval of increase is happening when x is less than negative 1.5, and it's a quadratic. It's crossing through all the values. Apparently, I'm not good at writing straight either, um, until x is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so I think I said that awkwardly. X is increasing until we get to a value of negative 1.5. So it includes all of the values less than negative 1.5. And X is an element of the real numbers because it's passing through everything until we get to that point in time. And you'll notice I didn't put an equal to sign here. And that's because once we get to the top of the function, it's not increasing and it's not decreasing anymore. Finally, intervals of decrease. Well, that's where I start becoming increasingly smaller. So my y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'm not going to try and write the range for this. We can see that the maximum value was 6.2 at x equals negative 1.5, and the range continued to decrease from that point. So we can write x is greater than negative 1.5, and we don't put the equal to sign again because it's not increasing or decreasing at the vertex. And before you come to class tomorrow, I'd like you to do exercise three on page 10 and just do question one.